Hi friends, very welcome to my Vanitar. I'm the host Hassan Moshiri. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build this infrared remote control decoder and switcher board. This is the top view of the PCB board and this is the bottom view. These three relays allows us to control three separate devices and each relay can tolerate up to 10 amps. So this feature allows us to use this board for a variety of applications, such as controlling the home light. Uh, you can select almost any remote control to control this board. For example, I selected this Sony HDTV remote control, but you are not bounded to something. Uh, I will talk about uh, this in more details later on in the video. To build this project, I used Altium Designer 21, Sumax's component libraries, Siglent SDS2102X plus oscilloscope. Of course, you can use this Siglent SDS1104XE oscilloscope. However, this plus one has a bigger screen and it allows me to show you the details better. Also, I use this PCB way fabricated PCB boards. So, uh, let's get started and build this device. All right, this is a schematic diagram of the device in Altium Designer. Let me show you which version I used. So I just select the help menu and then about. It says version 21.4.1 .1, build 3D. When I work with this software, really, I don't want to touch anything else. It's a very nice piece of electronic designing CAD software. So I highly recommend you to purchase an original license for this software. Otherwise, illegal copies are full of bug and they don't work as expected. This is the minimum penalty of using illegal copies. Uh, if they don't um, infect your computer with viruses and trojans. Anyway, uh, for the majority of the components here, for example, this regulator or this microcontroller, this MOSFET and this MOSFET, I use the Symaxis component libraries uh, instead of designing the component libraries of these components from scratch. Uh, Symaxis has provided plugin for the Altium designer as well as many other electronic designing CAD software. So I can access the plugin from here or here. Both of them does the same job. So if I select here, there we go. This is the plugin. Let's search for this MOSFET. This is the P-channel MOSFET. FDN. Uh, 360p so this is the part number let's see and there we go this is the mosfet for this one or this one is the footprint and the information for this one is available so let's press add to design and there we go do you see the footprint So it says, please check the bottom left corner of your schematic to drag the component and whatever. Anyway, let's close this. And there we go. As it says, bottom left corner. And this is the MOSFET as I used here. And if I press this and check the footprint. And there we go. This is the footprint of the component. And everything is ready. Just... A very simple process. I really like that. Anyway, uh, I can describe this schematic here. However, uh, the article, as you know, I always provide an article with each project and each video. So I have described everything in more details in the article, as well as the schematic explanation, as well as explanation of the schematic. So just please check the article link in the video description. You can find much more details in the article. Anyway, let's go to the 
PCB. So this is the PCB layout. It's a two layers PCB board and the majority of the components are SMD. So let me show you each layer. So I selected this panel and then single layer mode, yes, on. So because this is the top layer, so it just shows the top layer. If I select the bottom layer, it shows the bottom layer. And let's go here and turn this on. And if I go here and show the 3D, and this is the 3D view of the components. And I can rotate the board like this. Very nice. And if I don't want to show the 3D view of the components, I can select this one to be off. And there we go. This is just a board without 3D components. Okay, 3D body of the components. Anyway, um, there is not enough time here to show you how this works. And this is not a tutorial about the Altium Designer, but you can follow many, many tutorials and also the help of the software to learn this software. If you are in the electronic industry or even if you are a hobbyist, you probably know about the component search engine.com website. It's basically an electronic component search engine website with a lot of free features. I can say all of the provided services of this website are free. Let me show you how it works by an example. For example, let's search for our microcontroller 80 tiny 85. I use this microcontroller controller in the project. Let's press the search button. And there we go. This is the search results. From the search results, let's find our favorite one. This is our components 80tiny8520 SUR. Click on this. And there we go. It says it's a chip from microchip and it is an 8-bit microcontroller, 20 megahertz, and this is the package. You can download the component library from here and import it in your electronic designing CAD software. Also, you can just check the schematic symbol here. This is the PCB footprint. And this is the 3D model. So before you import this in your electronic design and CAD software, you can check how it looks. Anyway, you can download the data sheet from here. And also you can check the stock and prices by pressing this button. There we go. It shows the prices in a variety of distributors such as Arrow, DigiKey, Avnet, Farnell, RS components, and Element 14, and others. So you can directly purchase the component from here. It's a very nice piece of website, really. I have bookmarked this website in my browser. I used it in my day-to-day -day electronic designing tasks. All right, in this section, I will briefly explain the microcontroller's code. So as you can see, I have used the Arduino IDE and the version is 1.8.15. Before I continue to describe the code, I should say because I have used an 80 tiny type microcontroller here, we cannot use the conventional and, conventional and default uh, Arduino boards, which are listed here. We should install this 80 tiny core instead. To install this custom Arduino boards, you should come here to the file menu and then preferences. And then you should uh, insert this URL here. You can get this link from the article. 
After that, just press OK and come here. And then the board manager. Then, for example, type 80 tiny here and it will find the uh, boards. You should install this 80 tiny core. Then go to uh, go to the menu and select the 80 tiny core and then this one 80 tiny 25 45 85 no boot loader loader then go here and select 80 tiny 85 then 8 megahertz internal cpu frequency enabled enabled retained and bod disabled uh, we don't touch the rest and i have used this IR remote library you're gonna install the library from here manage the libraries you probably know about this this is nothing new so let's for loading anyway you're gonna install this IR remote library from here okay let's we close that and then include these two libraries the second one is the Arduino default library. It does not need any specific installation. And then, as you can see, I have initialized the variables and the pins here. And also, I have initialized this IR receiver module from here. Okay, this is the main loop. Uh, in this section, I will record the uh, remote buttons. Or the IR signals uh, and in this section I will use the recorded signals to activate the relays so this is the momentary switch and this is the toggling switch as you can see I have used the toggling switch for the relay number two so momentary and toggling are very easy so just set the pin to high and then set the pin to low after some delays and this toggling is even easier. So we have three relays. You can use whatever you like here. You can make all of them toggling or momentary or whatever pattern you like. Nothing special. Uh, so you have the code. Then after you done your uh, modification, or if you can use, if you like, you can use the same code. Just press compile. Okay, compiling the sketch. All right, all right. After you've done that, then you come here and select this one, export compiled binary. There we go. What this action does that this uh, generates this hex file in the same folder as the S, uh, that as we can find the sketch so you will use whatever avr isp a programmer and uh, use this hex file hex file to uh, program your microcontroller it's pretty easy process just program this hex file into your microcontroller so as you expect for the fuse bits you should set the fuse bit to 8 MHz internal clock and with, with no clock division. So that's the only setting for the fuse bits. Everything is pretty easy. I think you should not have any problem in this section. All right, in this section, I will use the Siglent SDS2102X plus oscilloscope to analyze the infrared signals. So I have put the channel one probe on the right position on the PCB board. Now I configure the channel one on the oscilloscope. So the input coupling should be set on DC from here and the trigger should be set on normal. Now, if I press any button on the remote control, we will see the signal on the oscilloscope screen like this. If I press another button, 
or this one, the signal also changes. Because my remote control is Sony, so we expect that, expect that the protocol of this signal is Sony as well. Uh, the important thing here that the received signal should be noise free like this. If I play with the time division, you can see how clean the signal it is. Okay, if your device didn't work correctly, one of the trouble troubleshooting steps would be checking the signal and the reception should be like this. Otherwise, you're gonna double check your soldering and hardware. All right, welcome back to the test bench. Now I'm gonna show you how you can configure and use the device. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to connect the power to the board. Uh, this is an ordinary X edge connector. There we go, I put it in place. And then I'm gonna connect the power wires, ground and power. There we go. So this green LED shows the proper power connection and it says regulator the regulators and other components works flawlessly now if i press the now if i press any button on the remote control you will see this blinking blue led so this led shows the proper reception of the infrared signals now we are ready to test the board to store the infrared signals uh, Actually, we can store up to three buttons or uh, three IR signals because we have three outputs and three relays. So, for instance, I select button number one, number, button number two, and button number three, which are labeled on, on this remote control. You, you, in your remote control, might be anything else. Uh, so, to store the signals, I should press this button and hold it down like this. And press number one this LED shows that it is stored in the memory button number two stored and button number three now if I put the board here to show you to show you the board better if I press button number one the first relay it's a momentary switch and by and the button number two the relay number two, it's a toggling switch. This is the off state, on state, and again off state. And button number three reacts to the relay, no, uh, relay number three reacts to, to the button number three. It's a momentary switch. Do you see that? As I said in the coding section, you can change this configuration and you can put your own uh, switching pattern. You can make them you can make all of them momentary or all of them toggling or whatever pattern, switching pattern you like. This is my default configuration. You have the code, you can change the code to whatever other style you like. Now I change my mind. I wanna replace the, the button number one with number, no, button number five. It is possible, of course. Again, I press this button and hold it down and press number button number five okay there we go it is stored in the memory and the board should not react to button number one isn't it there we go it doesn't react at all but it should work with button number five there we go relay number one with button number five now and others are also okay button number two Momentary switch and button number three. Oh, sorry, uh, button number two, toggling switch and button number three, momentary switch. Okay. Um, the next test is uh, we want to see if our configuration are, are stored correctly or not, and we should not lose this configuration if the if we disconnect the power or reset the power. So let me. Disconnect the power and put it back. So we should not lose our signals or, or configuration. Yes. 
so again the relays should react so number five relay number one and number two relay number two toggling switch and number three relay number 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 three so this says that our configuration are stored in the idoprom memory correctly and the device works as we expect so as you see there are a lot of and there are a variety of applications for this device and you can use it in many areas okay friends i hope you like this video don't forget to support my work by your subscription also don't forget to give me a big thumbs up catch you next time